All right, 15 minutes on the clock. We are talking about the San Antonio Spurs. And the first thing that comes to mind to me when I look at the San Antonio Spurs roster is like, man, why the hell didn't y'all trade for Bam Ingram? Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, Brandon Ingram, why didn't y'all take that deal? Like, I know that they was mad at Kawhi and they felt the Lakers had tampered. And, oh, hell no, we're not trading him to them unless y'all give us everything. And I think uh, the starting Zubak was in that deal as well. Why didn't they take that deal? Where would they be, especially with their player development over there? Where would they be if they had him on the team instead of DeRozan? And, and, and DeRozan had a great season, last season. Um, but he's a limited player and he's an older player. And I just don't think you should move out of spite. If that's the truth, I don't know what happened. Only R.C. Bruford knows and, and Pop knows what exactly what happened to trade. And I think that one of the segments that I wish they would have with all the NBA media that's out there, you know, I'm trying to be part of NBA media, but can we have true understanding what trades were offered and what weren't? Can they have like a, after five years, we'll tell you the truth of what happened or maybe, maybe Adam Silver forces GMs to record their phone calls with each other um, and post it. Because I would, I would just love to hear, they wouldn't agree to that because GMs would have plausible deniability. Hmm. I, I would just love to hear what the truth of the matter is because it's like, I can't attack GMs. Like I heard of, a couple of years back when Kyrie Irving was on Boston, the final season was on Boston. I was attacking Danny Ainge. I was like, why don't you trade Kyrie Irving? It's, it's obvious that he's not resigning. And then uh, my brother, who's a big Celtics fan, who I did the Celtics recap with, came out and said that he read that Danny Ainge wanted to trade him. The owner told him he couldn't. So, like, I need to know the facts of these situations before I judge the organizations, but that's neither here nor there. So when you talk about this team, you're talking about they have a, uh, a, a, a glut of guys who maybe they can turn out to be something. Uh, you have White, uh, who a lot of people are high on. Uh, DeJounte Murray, who a lot of people are high on. Lonnie Walker, uh, Kelvin Johnson. So you have a glut of these guys where you don't know where they're going to be. Are they superstars? Are they stars? Then you have older players and LaMarcus Aldridge, who's 35, which surprised me that he was that old. And I'm old, so I'm that old, so that makes sense. Uh, DeRozan um, is 31. Um, I believe he's in the last year of his contract. You have Rudy Gay, who's 34. So you have this mismatch team where you have these uh, older players and then you have these younger players who are kind of in the same pack. No one, um, neither one of them have truly broken out to say that they are the future of the franchise, but you wouldn't be surprised if they turn into it. The one good thing that the Spurs have is their player development. Uh, it's unmatched. The list of results, uh, where they draft players and what they become. Tony Parker, uh, even Kawhi Leonard, where he was drafted, what people thought he was and what he became. Um, so their track record with player development is second to none. I was, I really went, once again, I really would have wished to see what Lonzo Ball and uh, Ingram would have turned on to that system. But, you know, you have the roster that's in front of you. So what did the Spurs do? Pop's getting up there in age. Uh, do they tank or do they just play out the string? It doesn't, to me, I don't think they're a playoff team. I don't think they're a, uh, even a um, play-in team. I just think the lack of talent is just so uh, available and um, the lack of talent is so obvious, excuse me. Then you have a situation where people can point to the bubble and the way that the offense looked in the bubble and say, hey, look at this. But, you know, that was DeRozan at four. That was the bubble. Uh, I don't know if that pretends into the regular season uh, so much into a normal NBA season, well, normal-ish. Not going to be fans, but playing in stadiums. So you look at it, where, where do they go? Where's the focus? I think the focus has to be on the guys that are in the building currently. Let's see what Lonnie Walker has. 
let's see what Deontay Murray has, which means that they probably should trade uh, DeRozan. They probably should trade Aldridge and see what they can get from them. A lot of teams with dearth at uh, the big man position, like of uh, Aldridge train. I know he just signed an extension a couple of years back. Let me look that up. But a Lamarcus Aldridge trade to a say a team like Boston, who has the dearth of talent. Um, they have a lot of bigs, but not in no bigs that can score um, to the caliber of him. And I'm seeing a lot of rumors of uh, um, the Spurs trading. <laughs> Uh, Lamar Aldridge to Boston so that's uh, I guess I'm not the only one <laughs> uh, the only one thinking that uh, but someone like that trading him there trading DeRozan to a team that's looking for uh, players that could score would be interesting as well so that w- that's where I'm looking at um, most uh, uh, and the next question that I think that is very uh, important for the Spurs is how many years Pop's going to have left doing this? Um, I think that there's a lot of people who people are saying, people waiting in the wings. Uh, Odoka, one of the players that uh, people feel is waiting in the wings. Uh, Becky Hammond, another player waiting in the wings. But we don't know if they're going to be Pop. Um, we've seen a lot of people from Pop Street. Some have had success and some have failed. Uh, so is this the end of the era? Are we coming up towards the end? Uh, you know, I think Pop would probably want to stick around longer if he had uh, a young player, a young talent to kind of rebuild it again, try to see if he can reach the mountaintop one more time. But uh, I don't know how he's feeling. But then again, I don't know him. I mean, he is a military guy. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're cut from a different cloth. So he might want to ride this thing to the wheels fall off. Uh, but uh, he is getting up there in age, and, you know, people have speculated how many years does he have left. Uh, so, obviously, the longest tenured coach in the league, respected coach in the league. Uh, what happens to that transition? You know, are we coming towards the end of the era where you have a full transition in uh, San Antonio? So that's one thing to talk about and one thing to really concern him. As far as players-wise, I think that the player with the most upside is probably Deontay Murray. There was uh, that year that he tore his uh, ACL that a lot of people were talking about that he could be the most improved player in the NBA. Uh, He's someone that uh, uber athletic, uh, bigger guard, uh, jump shot not really there, but I just talked about Chip English. Um, Well, I haven't talked about Chip English, their shooting coach, world renowned shooting coach. If he can get, uh, the, you know, that tutelage and results that he got from Tony Parker and, and Kawhi Leonard, then you, you're talking about something. You have a guard that could that could potentially be something. And I always wondered, and maybe someone can understand this, explain this chick, Chip England to me, because wouldn't he make more money on the open market if he just was a, a shooting coach? There's so many players in the NBA that their games would get taken to a next level if they became knockdown shooters. You know, there's a, 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 um, a glut of these specialist coaches uh, in the NBA that coach NBA players, that coach NFL players as well. I would think shooting is probably the most desired skill that players are trying to get. Uh, why wouldn't he? I, and maybe he likes the Spurs and he doesn't want to do all that. But I'm sure if he became a free agent and had guys do a pilgrimage to wherever he was staying, people would come from far and wide to get the tutelage. So I always that that always always wondered that like why isn't he just somebody shooting coach? Why don't he just focus on that? So um, that's an interesting uh, subplot to me. Um, another interesting thing uh, with the the Spurs is uh, their ability to attract free agents uh so they haven't really had the cap and tried to play in free agency but once again pop coming towards maybe the end of the line here um this is a small market team and you've not really noticed that and focused in on that with them because they've been so successful but this is a small market team like is it truly an end of the era with the spurs and uh, we'll see if this was truly a culture or was this something that was held together by one, you know, gargantuan figure uh, who held it together through the, you know, what he emanated in the force of his will. 
uh, most impactful player for the team, I would definitely say it would have to be Deontay Murray again if he can ascend and get a jumper and he becomes that player that a lot of people were hoping that he would become, that most improved type player, then, uh, you know, obviously their fortunes change. Um, I think that he has probably the highest uh, upside of the youngest guys, of the young guys, that youth movement that I talked about. He's a little bit older than most of the the Lonnie Walkers and the the, John, the Youngs and the, the Johnsons and things of that nature. So um, I would, I, you can't really describe him as the leader of their youth movement, but it'll be interesting to see what, uh, you know, he does and um, if it's possible that um, – he becomes that most improved player that a lot of people were uh, hoping that he would be. The most intriguing player, is, player to me is Lonnie Walker. He was someone drafted in the mid uh, mid first round, um, and that's where the the Spurs have found the most joy um, as far as players. So, um, is he one of those players that can take that massive leap? Um, he cut his hair. I didn't even recognize him in the bubble because he cut his hair. He had that little you know, thing that, uh, what's the name, uh, man, Alfred Payton had kind of look like that, but he, he cut that down and, um, we'll see what his game is. I think of all the guys, he has the, you know, the, the biggest upside with his size, uh, his athletic ability. So we'll see if the Spurs, uh, development department, uh, development department can strike again. Um, very, uh, very intrigued by what his upside could be. And then Johnson, he's a player that played at uh, my alma mater, Ivy League School, Fresno State, uh, repping the Bulldogs. Uh, so <laughs> uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, he looks like a steal. You know, he was drafted late rounds. I think he was the last pick in the first round. And uh, I like what I saw out of him for the bubble. They also have Trey Lyles. Maybe that's a, a reclamation project. He kind of fits the molds of the Boris Diaw. Uh, kind of tweener players that they found joy with as well on the team. So maybe he's someone um, that they can get some dividends out of as well. Uh, Slow Mo has kind of moved off and gone to uh, Memphis. I think he was on Memphis last year. So, you know, there's definitely a void there. Maybe he could be there for the future. So I'll be interested to see if they can actually, you know, uh, get something from him. He's always been an intriguing player. He just never really uh, hit his stride in the league. So maybe the Spurs is a team that he could do it with. So. As far as their playoff and regular season hopes, like I said, I don't really see them as a playing team. Uh, they have a lot of middling players, but the Spurs uh, player development part been a second to none as far as results and their pedigree. So I wouldn't be surprised if one of these players uh, hits a leap like a Jimmy Butler did and um, surprises all of us. And then, then you have to reconsider what, you know, their uh, upside would be. Uh, the most intriguing thing to me personally with this team is do they trade DeRozan, Aldridge? What's the future of Pop? Um, you know, it's kind of morbid thing to talk about with a, a franchise about the players that they're going to trade and is their coach going to leave. But I do think those are the most interesting su uh, subplots of the Spurs team. All right, 30 teams, 30 minutes. Um, you just solo dolo on these ones. So they're obviously shorter than 30 minutes because I can't talk about – any team for 30 minutes solo, but um, we're going to hit all the teams. So definitely look out for that. And we're going to be doing these uh, things uh, throughout the regular season. So uh, check in, subscribe on it. 30 teams, 30 minutes. Get us.